Why do we make chips out of silicon? Because it's cheap. That's it. Thanks for watching. More of this from the nerdiest people you know at craigandave.org. Oh, all right, fine. Here's the extended version. Silicon makes up over a quarter of the Earth's crust, so it's not just cheap, it's dirt cheap, literally. You've probably walked on the next generation of processor material on your way to Greg's. But being common isn't enough. I mean, pigeons are common, and no one's building supercomputers out of them. I don't think. Silicon's real magic trick is that it's a semiconductor. Not too conductive, not too resistive, just right, like the Goldilocks of the periodic table. And with a bit of chemical wizardry, called doping, we can persuade it to either conduct electricity or not without having to wiggle any physical switches. Which is perfect when you're trying to fit billions of transistors onto something the size of a fingernail and would rather not have it catch fire. There are better materials. Germanium's got sassier conductivity, gallium arsenide is fast and flashy, and silicon carbide handles heat better than a school teacher in July. But they're all either expensive, fragile, or only available in quantities smaller than your average USB stick. So why silicon? Because it's the best combination of available, workable, and affordable. It's like the margarita pizza of semiconductor materials. Not the fanciest, but reliably brilliant, and you can make a billion of them without bankrupting your nan. That's why your phone, your laptop, your smart fridge, and even your overly chatty vacuum cleaner all rely on silicon chips. Because when you're trying to cram 10 billion switches into a chip and sell it for 300 pounds, you can't be fussy. And if you're thinking, but what happens when we run out of silicon? Don't worry. We're more likely to run out of patience for system updates first. More of this from the nerdiest people you know at craigandave.org.